Well, hello, fellas. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to start a project. If you get a glimpse of this shirt I got on, don't pay attention to it. Uh, the shingles is not quite gone on the back of my neck, and the collar just runs me crazy, so I cut it off. But anyway, where do we start? What I've got here in these two jugs is some mold release from back when I used to build aircraft parts. I used to build horizontal stabilizers and so forth out of fiberglass uh, a long time ago. And I ran out of the, you know, the, the can stuff that most people use. And I knew I had some, so I went digging and I dug it up. And I got, I got two types here, and I don't know why they won't work. This one's called part ball. And it puts a film on, on whatever you're doing, and then it, you know, after it dries, it, it just releases. It used to work real good on aircraft parts, but those were big molds, you know. You have to use a spray gun. And this one is a, a fiber, fiber release, one step mold release. Uh, I may try it later, but today I'm going to use some of this. It says to uh, spray it on to atomize it with a spray gun. That's what the way I used to use it. In fact, this is probably the spray guns I used to use. So I'm going to put some in here and leave it. I got it going and turned down, as you can see. So let's see what we got going here. This is old CD case. Looks like it does pretty good in there. That's it, that's all you gotta do. And 10, 15 minutes it dries. Now I cut seven inches off of this. This makes it a little higher than that. I like it a little higher. Uh, gives you, you know, some room to work around. But anyway, I'm gonna put this between centers. And I went ahead and marked my centers. You notice I said my centers. Because this one is just a little off, but I want it in the middle of that. So, uh, what I always do, and I highly recommend it, I know a lot of people don't, but I do, <clears throat> I'll drill a one inch hole in this end, hole maybe quarter, three eighths inch deep. And so my, if I can find the one I'm going to use, this one. So this fits into it about up to there, so there's no way it can escape. Period zero. Got me a little dot right here. hard wood. So anyway, there it is and it will fit right there, like so. See, it just, it just can't go anywhere, no matter what you do. Well, I'm going to drill a hole in your green guy. I'll put it right here then. <laughs> so, uh, and the end is going to the tailstock. We put this up, we don't put it up, I'll never find it again. Then it's going to this tail, tail stock. I put a little hole in it to fit the last center. I don't really have to, but I just sort of like to. There. And then we are ready. I'm going to put this back on now. Mm. Okay. It's pretty dry wood. That's a thousand, pretty easy. I gotta go clean this face mask. Bloody.
Ooh, Betsy. All right. That is, if I were going to sand that, I wouldn't need to. Some people say a scraper can't get wood like this, and you're wrong. And he's very little. If I was going to sand that, I'd probably start with maybe a little 320 and then 400 and I'd be done. All right, I've got it off now and uh, I'm going to put a face plate so on. So here's your little trick. Trick, I guess. I don't know. Method, whatever. If you're, if you're doing epoxy and you're concerned about your epoxy getting on your face plate, take and put your little piece of wax paper underneath it. Find the right hole there. Take your wax paper like this, and we will find a piece of tape. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, tape it up like so. See, I always leave my face plate on, almost till I'm, you know, have to take it off. All right, there you are. That way you're. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting epoxy on your on your face plate. It'll pop right off. I want to make a mark here. If I, where I want my balloons to go. Uh, this is going to be the top and this will be the bottom. So, And I hope to turn this one down here so my balloons are going to go right about here. I don't know how many of them I'll get in there. I didn't realize I didn't realize they were that big. So here's here's what I'm using right here. Got this over to I don't know some hobby shop. See, there's a smaller one. Uh, there's one. Uh, there, that's where they're gonna be right there. <clears throat> well, I started uh, drilling this out. I didn't forget about the camera. My plan was to pick it up later anyway. Aren't these nice? I'm saving these. I got a whole bucket of these I'm gonna save. I'm gonna see there, I'm gonna try to make something out of it. Okay. Might get some free design out of it. Anyway, getting back to this. So I sort of thought I'd bring you up to snuff what I was doing. I've got one of them drilled out. I'm not going to video the rest of them because you know it's just drilling and you never know how long these videos are going to be. And I really like to keep my videos right around 30 minutes. you got to bear in mind that's probably four hours worth of, uh, you know, turning and other things going on to try to put in 30 minutes. It's, it's not the easiest thing to do. See this blue bit right here? I went ahead and bought one. I see other people using them. Well, I figured out why. Well, they're about half price of the, you know, the regular one. And uh, I'm sure they do a, a good job, but you got to, a large gap in here. So when you get a big one, you know they, they seem to want to not track well unless you're real careful. Because I notice when I start this, if I pull it back a little bit, it wants to jump out of the hole. See, look here, right here. I get this right here. See this one? I pulled it back and it jumped out. It did those kind of things. They don't really matter. But, uh, you know, it's just the point they do it. So I won't be buying any more of these. Or maybe I will. I don't use them that often. Now, I want to show you what I'm up to here. So when I get all four of these things done, my next step will be to seal it all. Really seal it good with uh, my Minwax sanding sealer. Probably two or three coats. And the purpose of that is to minimize the amount of air that comes out when I pour my epoxy. So once that's done and dry, and of course I'm leaving this on all the time. I got my wax paper here. It'll stay on until I don't need it anymore. 
here's what I'm up to. So once I got all these things done, you see that little, excuse me, see that little hole in the center? See, that's got a stab. That's a, that's a fake uh, dogwood bloom. Looks like it, some kind of cloth. I don't know, but it ain't gonna do anything. It's got a little stem there and that, that little hole in there. Well, that's gonna go, if I can get it in there. Hard, sometimes hard to do things with one hand. So that's, that ain't very deep, is it? I might have to make that deeper. So anyway, that's gonna go in that hole like that. And I'll put some uh, Star Bond CA in that hole and hold it in place till it sits. It's probably gonna go back, you know, almost to the bottom. Yeah, I guess I got my measurement off. I could have swore I had it right because I even used the index and thing. But, you know, I could have counted one off, but you see right here, and then I run out right there. And that one's a little wider, and that one's a little wider. So to fix the situation, I think what I'm going to do is come in here about right here and do something about like that on every one of them. And that way, uh, you won't be able to tell it. <laughs> I hate to do it that way, but you know, that's the way it is sometimes. I've got these down rounded about the best I can. Probably won't make much difference in the long run. But now what I'm using is min wax sanding sealer and uh, putting a real good heavy coat on it all because it's my firm belief that this stops a whole lot of bubbles from coming out. So every piece of wood in here needs to be coated, whether it's you know going to end up as a final final part of it or not, it doesn't really okay. matter. I'm gonna let that run just a little while before I come back and um, put another coat. I may put three, I don't know. All right, it's been overnight. So I've got uh, these blooms right here. I need to go and get me a pair of dikes. I'm gonna go ahead and put this first one in. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm going to put a little bit of Star Bond thick in the hole, right here. If it ever gets there. Well, come on in. Uh, there it is. Okay. And put this in that hole right about like so and I want to get this situated just about where I want it. And do it with just a little bit of accelerator. Hold it there Larry. Don't let her go. Uh oh. Come on yeah. Still not. A little hotter than that. Ah, it'll sink down too low. Okay. That's in there alright, but what I want to do, see like this one right here, I want this one up higher. So what I'm gonna do, and I already know this works. So I'll hold this one up just where I want it, and I'm gonna put some thin CA on it. Go oh, to get your finger out of the way, right? Can get it where you want it. To be about right there. And Hit it with, come on now, there you go, hold it up there a second, there you go, should stay there, that one's okay, that one's okay, it's okay, we got them all now, Well, we're over here where I always pour my resin up at. Uh, today, I'm going to be using Total Boat Fix Set. Now, Fix Set is it's just like, you know, it says Thick Set, so if you got a thick pour, that's what this is all about. In other words, a deep pour, 
because this stuff sits up extremely slow. Uh, when I pour it, I can't turn it for like two days. But, uh, you know, I watch, I guess I'm going to gripe a little bit about some of these other guys. I think they're doing total mold a disservice because they, they uh, pour something up and I'm watching them pour. Now I'm talking about people that already know better. People got 50,000 subscribers, you know, maybe a couple of them. And they pour something up and they pull it out of the pot the next day and they see they got cracks and stuff. And I'm sitting there telling them when they're doing it, usually laying in bed for my wife watching this, and I'm saying, you're using the wrong resin, dude. Most all of them use a two to one and it is not intended for a deep pour like this one. It, set, it generates too much heat, it sets up too quick, and you're going to get bubbles and cracks. I mean, that's the way it is. All right, I'm going to put quite a bit in here. I'm going to put a very slight green tint. Hopefully I don't get too much. It's still really hard not to get too much, so I'm going to go all the way up to the floor. And that's as high as it goes. I mean, here's the hard enough. See, I'm to this floor on the three to one scale. I want, I want to go to this next floor right here with the hardener. Oops, I'm a little too far, but that's okay. So that's how you do it. You got about three minutes of stirring time. I'm going to go ahead and put just a touch of this green in here. Tell you what, if I uh, get too much green, I'm going to get a bigger cup and pour me some more resin in it. I don't want much now. See what that does to it. That's about all I want right there. Now what I like to do, I like to pour it into another one. Like that. this up. When I stir this in I'll pour it back to the original one then it'll be ready to go. Hey, what are you doing? Well, here's what I'm doing. i get my hands on this real slick. I'm going to pour this into my mold. I'm videoing. I have a visitor here. Give me a minute. Ooh. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is something that most people don't do. And I'm going to take this and put it here. Now this, I think, in my opinion, you get a better saturation and less bubbles. As you can see, I'm going to have to do it again. I might have another, another one just about the same amount. Okay, catch me a little bit. Perfecto. That looks good. Well, here it is the next morning. Uh, I'm not going to turn it yet. It's not quite ready. See, I can take and make a finger, fingernail print right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back off here and put it in dehydrator for a couple hours and let it cool naturally and it'll be hard as a rock. But what I really wanted to show you was Zero cracks, zero bubbles, zero deformities. I mean, Ed, you can't get no more perfect than that. That's because I use the right resin. And I ain't fussing at them too much. They, they should know better. But if you want a perfect job, you got to use the right tools. I got a little place up there. I think that chipped out though when I was taking it out. I had a hard time getting out of that mold. My, Part all worked good, but it was stuck right there, underneath. And I just couldn't get it loose. Anyway, I'm gonna go do that. Put it in there for a couple hours at uh, 90 degrees, and let it cool naturally. And maybe we can turn it to. Hey, good morning. I'm out here a little later than normal. Uh, my wife and I both got our second shot for the uh, COVID-19. 
made my arm real extremely sore, but uh, got to her pretty good. She's been in bed most of the time. Some people does, and some people it doesn't. She'd be all right. Unfortunately, she's taking chemo at the same time, so <clears throat> that ain't no fun. So what I got here, I wanted to show you this. If you can see it right here, see those grill marks? <laughs> it's a, that, that's where I laid it on the grill in the dehydrator to dry it. And it uh, impregnated it with some marks. Unfortunately, they're not deep enough to hurt anything. So it's going it's to be just fine. Other than that, it's almost a sin to turn that because it's so smooth. I really think maybe my green could have been a little lighter, but, but when I get it thinner and, and from the back side, it might be all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down until I get real close to the flower. And then I'm going to taper this in and taper that in. And I'm going to do my not get world famous top and bottom rings out of uh, walnut. I like doing it that way. I tell, you, I tell you the advantage to it. The advantage is it's a lot less problems to hollow because what I'll do is I'll come in here on the bottom and I'll come here with a, a fastener bit to about here. And that way I can hollow it out here and then I'll put that solid walnut on there and that'll close the back off and I'll have either a tendon or a recess on it yet to be determined. So I can get that all done and clean and pretty in, inside and then when I flip it around uh, before I put the walnut ring on it, I'll go ahead and do the top. It won't be about that deep. It won't take much. Be easy So peasy. what do we got here? I turn fast. I'll probably be turning this around 2500. It is well secured. It's on a uh, six screw face plate. And it's got that, as you can see, the live center. So I guess that's about the end of my talking. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to be using a, uh, a Larry Martin round cutter. And one thing I do, I want to mention it before I get started. You know, they all tell you to hold these things horizontal like this. And basically, you got a scraper. Well, I don't do that. I come in at a 45, and that gives me a slicing technique. And uh, it's, it's a lot better. It's a lot prettier. And you know, you don't get any uh, chip out here. If you got them like that, you know, you're, you're subject to get under something and pull it up. Right here, you're subject to just slice it off. So that's it. Let's see what we got here. What do we have? Pat's Blue Ribbon 452. We're going to get a lot better than that. A lot better than that. We're at 2,000. Okay. We're at 2,489. Another thing I wanted to mention before we get started is when you come in here like this, you never go over the end. You stop and come back into it. Uh, that uh, when you hit that unsupported edge, it'll chip it out. Okay. All right, I'm back at FedEx. Come for a visit. Believe it or not, I got some chip out right here. Just a little, I think it's whenever I looked up. But it, it'll come out as soon as I get rid of that. You know, it, it's turning air on this side. And then it's coming into it with a vengeance.
looking pretty nice here. Getting close right there. Right there. And maybe the best I can do on the outside. Because see right there, I'm getting a touch of the flyer and I really don't want that. A little bit of white there and there. And that's as far as I can go. Alright, I got my death hole drill. <clears throat> I didn't show it on purpose, I just not much sense in showing it all the time. Seen one, you see them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this inside now. settle in and then you give it a little pressure you don't want to kill it just give it some well I believe it ought to be pretty well settled in now I don't think it's going anywhere I'm going to go ahead and trim this down and flatten the bottom and I'm going to put a recess in it and that's what we're going to do Well, what did you miss? This dumb ass me. I was talking to the camera and turned around to look at it and figured it wasn't turned on. So, you know, sorry about that. Well, I flipped it around. But first I cleaned up the walnut on the other end. Made me a recess, flipped it around and got the screws out and got the face plate off and now, and I bored it to meet the other end. And now I'm turning the inside out. So that's where we're at. Well, I pretty much got it sanded inside, best I can anyway. I sand some more after I get the top on. But now I'm going to mix up some epoxy, or z epoxy as this says. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just going to glue this solid one on and then use a parting tool, small parting tool, to open it up. Should have had that center out. I don't know. Don't matter now, does it? <laughs> well, I've got this sanded down to 400. Uh, inside and out, uh, inside probably not as much, but I'm going to try to do some on the inside. Uh, I'm not sure how well it'll work because this is axe paste. And I've been using it, I guess, since they first started selling it. And 
I haven't changed, so that tells you something. This is a piece of an air filter, sort of like a scotch brake pad, real fine, but it works good. I like to use it. I have used the green pads and they work good too. I like this. There you go. That's pretty nice, isn't it? I think she'll like that. Gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the bottom now. Here's a laser, see if I can't get my logo down that size. Man, well, there you go, the finished product. Wife just saw it for the first time. She liked it. She wasn't exactly jumping up, side, up and down about it, but she liked it. Some more light on it here. Had a little tea light in it. She said it looked good with the tea light, so it changed. I think it turned out all right. I. If I do it again with, with blooms, I'm going to press them flat first so they don't, you know, I got more room to get them sandwiched between something so I don't lose part of it. Like this one said, I lost the middle and part of the sides because, well, it just wasn't, it was too far back or something. And this one too, but I guess you can tell what they are. They can't all be perfect. This one's pretty good. You got most of the center still there. So that's dogwood, and that's uh, the top and bottom is uh, walnut. A lot of time in something little like that, but that's the way it is. That dogwood is really hard. Anyway, today was a sad day for me, guys. Had to go put Brandy down this morning. His nose cancer got so bad he just was in misery. You just got to do what you got to do and move on. So we'll see you later and uh, call your mama. And give me a like. I'd appreciate that. I'll be back. I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I don't guess I ever will be. Bye-bye.